So we are with the Tampa legend right now. No GPS needed, so. I got this. I don't think I'll ever get used to having a backup camera in these cars. Yeah, I like right? it. I, I, like it. I, I, I rely on it. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, so my daughter has a Jeep and when I use her car, there's no backup camera, so I forget about it. I always bump into things, so <laughs> I've become, you know, part of today's society, I guess you would say, where you gotta use all this technology. Yeah. Now, is this a daughter that was down in Austin, Texas? Austin, just, uh, Texas, graduated yeah. recently? Yeah, she was there four years. So I probably went at least twice a year, so I went about eight times over the four years or so. And every single time I've gone, there was a bachelor party or a bachelorette party from New York. All New York people, every time I went for a bachelor party there in Austin, Texas, it was unbelievable. And I got invited to them, but I just, you know. Amazing. I couldn't partake in that. So they recognize you then, like groups of girls and groups of dudes were like, wow, that's Tino Martinez. Yeah. It's my bachelor or bachelorette party weekend. Yeah, I would take pictures of them at the bar, restaurant, you know, that kind of stuff, but I would not go out with those guys. But uh, I, I kid you not, every time I went, uh, I meet some people from New York and I go, let me guess, a bachelor party. And they're like, yeah, how'd you know? I go, there's always one here with you guys. Uh, and they tear it up. One of your most recent Instagram posts, you met a kid who is named after you. Yeah, you saw that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Constantino. Yeah, it's happening. What's that like, it, seeing it, somebody it, that, nowadays, he was, he was probably, what, 12, 13? Yeah, I think he was like, yeah, about 12 years old. Uh, it's like the, about the third time it's happened to me, and I, and I should have taken pictures in the past, and I didn't. Recently, I was in Buffalo, and I was doing a, a, a signing there with you know some of the Buffalo Bill players and whatnot, and this, this mom and her son were there, and he had a Yankee T-shirt on. And the mom says, well, tell him what your name is. He said, it's Tino. I said, no way. She says, yeah, I'm named after you. I said, that's cool, but are you Constantino? She said, he said yeah, I'm Constantino, J James something, whatever. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. So I said, let's take a picture. So we took a picture and uh, put it on Instagram because that is pretty cool. That's I'm sure cool you appreciated that. He, he, Actually, that probably made, made it all worth it, you know? Like, yeah. Finally well, got a chance to meet you. Yeah, and I, I, I love that. I've, I've, it's happened in the past where I've heard about it and I've always sent that person a uh, picture in the mail. I get the address somehow or another but I've never met the other ones. Uh, this one I met, and I mean, it's not like, you know, my name is Derek, like Derek Jeter or something like that. It's Constantino. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, you, your mom has got to be kind of bold and the dad as well. Like, yeah, we're naming him Constantino, man. We're going to go with it. I'm like, okay. So it seems like between you and Andy Pettit, moms love you too. And you probably <laughs> got that your entire career, but like, what is, what is it about that? I have no idea. <laughs> I just think that me, well, besides, you know, Andy and I are good looking guys, I guess. I don't know, no. We're nice guys, I guess. We come across as nice people and, um, you know, good people, so maybe that has to do with it. But I, my entire career, especially in New York, when I would hang around, uh, you know, Derek Jeter and Jorge Posada a lot, you know, they'd always meet these girls, you know, because they were a lot younger than I was. All the girls would say, my mom loves you. My mom loves you. My mom loves you. I'm going, man, does everybody's does there mom love me? So I thought that was hilarious. So I told somebody one time, I said, listen, when we, when we walk around here, I'm gonna meet somebody on the streets and they're gonna, I guarantee you they're gonna tell me my mom loves you. <laughs> and sure enough, my mom loves you. I'm like, I'll tell your mom I love her too. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. It, yeah, it, it happens all the time. If I'm at a signing or at a, an appearance somewhere, they'll say, you and Andy Pettit were my two favorites. You and Andy Pettit. I'm like, all right, that's good. That's a great guy to be associated with. I love Andy, so uh, it's a compliment. Well, we're talking Gotta about the phone store. Gotta make a quick pit stop. Yeah, well, the, the worst place in the world, you know, is the phone store. Who, who wants to go get their phones fixed? Well, I got this new phone. This one broke. So I have to mail this one back to the company, get this one on. And, you know, I have all my contacts on here. The SIM card's out, but there's Derek Jeter in here, Jorge Posada. I got all these numbers in here. So I got to make sure I erase them before I send this back to this company. So that's why I'm here and not trying to do this myself at home. Yeah, and we got to play uh, play a little cornhole. Yep, we'll play a little cornhole. I've never played cornhole in the store ever, <laughs> just for the kids, really. But that was the place we played, and he wanted to kick my butt <laughs> on camera, which he did, which was embarrassing. I think we made their day, though. Like, how many people do you actually think pick up any of those bean bags and play cornhole in the store? Again, it's for the kids. When the kids <laughs> come and the parents are getting the phones, the five, six, seven year olds get there, but they just keeps them occupied while the parents are getting the phones done. We took it upon ourselves to play an adult game. But, you know, usually there's beer involved in that. A little tailgating action. All right, so what do you say is like the most random number that you have in your cell phone? Uh, let me look through this thing here real quick here. I got an Angel Flowers, Flower Sucker in Tampa. I don't have Michael Jordan. But I do have a moderate shot. 
who I love, by the way. Some of the funniest former athletes, great human beings. We got Dave, Billy Joel's keyboard player. I don't have Billy Joel's number, but one day, close enough. Yeah, <laughs> stands right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Angelo Dundee, Muhammad Ali's trainer for years and years and years. I had his son Jimmy's number, and the stories he could tell about Muhammad Ali training in Miami, all the racism he had to go through and stuff with Angelo Dundee, his father, who took care of him and uh, really started changing things, those two guys by themselves. John Filippelli, president of the Yes Network, right there. Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. That's a cool one. That's a good one. Hal Steinbrenner, owner of the New York Yankees. That's a good one to have. <laughs> <laughs> For baseball, what do you think they can do to, to make the game more fun and appealing when it does come to those fans and like social media. And well, you know, social media wise, um, you know, the, the good thing with social media is the players can keep in contact with the fans. Like, you know, when I played, you know, it was like you, you couldn't you couldn't make contact with the fans. So I like that part of it. If they can go behind the scenes more often, like they do um, with football, you know, football with the microphones and stuff, and you get to hear a lot of what's going on in the games through highlights. You don't want cameras in the clubhouse, but if you can some, somehow have a person that's going to say, hey, I'm going to be in the, in, the, in the locker room today, not whether they're changing one, I'm just preparing, watching a video of the next the, the pitcher, see what goes on before a game, the preparation, just things like that, real simple things that doesn't don't annoy the players too much. Uh, I think the fans would like to see that kind of stuff, what happens in the inner circles. That's what I'd want to see if I was a fan. They don't realize how much really goes into one game, every game. So looking back, what would you have liked to have shown off to the fans? You know, like Joe Torre, you know, coming after a game, giving a speech after a win or something. They don't really do speeches like you do in football, but you see the football coaches talk to the players after a game. I think the fans want to see that, especially on a positive note, not not if Joe Torre or Lupinella is, is upset with the team. You don't, you don't want to show them that, but uh, just, just certain little things like, you know, hey, great game today, you know, or after a loss, hey, keep working hard. Just see what it's like in there. It's not like, you know, Guys come to the locker room after a, a loss and, and they're celebrating and the radio's on. It's not like that. It's just like, ah, you know, missed opportunity. You think about the game and move on. But after a win, it's like, you know, it's, it's a happy locker room, as you, as you may know. Yeah. There's certain times where you go to these dinners, or I'm sure while you're playing, like, if you were hopping on the airplane and you had, like, a cool pair of shades on or a sweet suit. You know, on an airplane flight, I'd say, that'd be kind of cool to, uh, you know, show the guys uh, they're playing cards. Some guys are reading, some guys listen to music. You know, Bernie Williams would be playing his guitar. So if you, if you could just see that uh, behind the scenes, I think that would be really cool for the fans as well. You know, but not every day. Make you want to watch like in increments. Right, with the team's approval and whatnot. And, and then you get to see more of their personalities as well. You know, you don't just see Aaron Judge prepare for a game in the batting cage. You know, whatever he does, you can follow him one day and just, he doesn't even have to talk to the camera. And just watch him do his thing and, and prepare and, uh, that's cool because you don't realize how hard these guys really work. It's not just batting practice in the game. It's like you know they're they're uh, with the hitting coach. They're the, the pitchers are, are watching you know videos of their mechanics and just to see how they correct things. It's pretty interesting. So we got the chores done. Yeah. So until the oh, next huge, one. Huge. Yeah. The man. We'll do it. We'll do it again. We'll do hey. this again for sure. <laughs>